The Gate of Elitiness is RuneScape's newest skilling boss, and in this video, I'd like to teach you about a method you can use to consistently kill it within 3 minutes and 30 seconds without too much hassle. Let's get started. The skilling boss requires the Odor Devourer quest to access. Stat-wise, I'm not sure what kind of minimum level you need, but high levels should make a difference here. Mining is by far the most important skill here, and having access to mining crit boosts such as the Magic Golem Outfit, Taga's Core Hammer, Rock Crushing Scrimshaw, and Quarry Master Aura help a ton. Something else that is nearly just as important are mobility abilities and things that reduce the cooldown of these abilities being escape, surge, and dive. I'm aware that there are other strategies to move around such as prisms, but simple fast skills are done using mobility abilities. Reduce the cooldown by using a main hand with the mobile invention perk or the shadow's grace archaeology relic power. Using a beast of burden familiar also makes this boss significantly easier and is what I recommend using if you're following this guide. I'll be using a pack yak. The boss is relatively simple, but complex enough to a point where you will get frustrated if you mess up. Listen carefully as I'm about to rapid fire some important bits of information you must know before we continue. Feel free to replay this part as often as necessary. The boss arena is split into two sections, being what I call the north of the barrier section and the south of the barrier section. The southern section is significantly safer than the northern part if you repair the conduits to increase the barrier strength. This requires moonstone fragments collected to the south which you should collect before the piles come out indicated by this bar turning red. You deal damage to the boss by transmuting and then mining these piles for shards. You collect shards significantly faster from piles north of the barrier. Now you're able to increase the damage you deal by pressing the special action button once it's charged and then jumping up these pillars to attack or slam the boss. This will allow you to deal 25% more damage, so saving up your shards is recommended. An easy way to put them in your Beast of Burden if you're using one is to simply place one of these shards on your action bar and then hold down that key. Best of all, this doesn't interrupt your action. Using the special action button will charge up a massive damage dealing attack that you will really only survive using Barricade or by running towards Ictolin's little green circle. It also resets your barrier strength, by the way. Is it possible to survive using different methods? Yes, but you can't use Disruption Shield or Resonance. It won't work. You can use Immortality, though. You fill this boss by either its health bar fully replenishing, being full, or by taking too much damage and dying. It heals during the fight anyway, but if you see these minions coming out, you want to click them as fast as possible to take them out, because they will heal the boss, and once it gets full, you will die. Now, taking damage at this boss isn't necessarily the problem, as you're able to easily out-eat it, but the problem of taking damage, with the exception of some mechanics, is that you heal the boss and therefore prolong the fight, which is quite frustrating. Prolonging the fight by taking damage also increases overall difficulty because the corruption stacks bleed down your health. Now that you have an idea of what the boss is like, I'll walk you through a kill that I've been doing and explain what and why I do step by step. It's possible that your results may vary, especially if you don't have all the mining boosts. I personally did this without an augmented pickaxe or quarry master aura, but I was using a pack yak, magic golem outfit, and the scrimshaw. I start the encounter early by clicking on the NPC and choosing start. I then farm a couple fragments, even though I'm not really going to be restoring the barrier at all, unless I mess up this kill. I then go to the northeastern corner as seen to get ready to farm the shards that come out as soon as the bar goes fully red. I stand in this spot because you can get knocked to the side and take damage if you stand underneath a location where a pile is dropped. Okay, the bar is fully red and the piles come out. If you're standing where I was standing, you'll be perfectly on tile 3, and then you can easily move in between or back and forth between tiles 1 and 3 because this pile is 3 tiles wide. This will allow you to avoid the mechanics which heal the boss if they hit you in addition to dealing damage while continuing to transmute. In between attacks you have roughly, I think, 3 XP drops to do this, and now we, or should I say I, am about to click my special action button. When you're farming this pile, as soon as you've nearly finished transmuting the pile, you're going to want to click this special action button, and what it is is a sort of free reign to by the way, you need to click it again if it turns blue to mine the shards themselves, which will essentially give you free reign for a little bit to transmute and then click the pile again to start mining the shards themselves, which will be placed in your inventory. Next, you're going to go south, and this is where Bladed Dive comes in handy and transmute this pile to the south, which is a little bit weaker, but you're going to be using it anyway, and you need to do something until that big attack comes in 
and you heal. Once you've turned this pile blue, go back to the northeastern section north of the barrier and start transmuting pile C. Again, it's far easier to avoid the mechanics if you treat this as a three tile pile standing on either the left or right side and not in the middle, making it significantly harder to dodge these attacks, which if you mess up, will heal the boss and prolong the fight, making it harder. At this point, you're about to take a massive hit, which is indicated by the bar in the top of your screen going to number seven. Unfortunately, there isn't much you can do about this, but try to eat some food while you're avoiding the telegraphing attacks, because while you're moving, it's, you know, you might as well be eating a bit of food anyway. Notice the special action button in the left corner. Well, that's almost recharged. And as soon as it has recharged, you're going to want to click it straight away. Once you've finished mining it, go back to the save zone and start mining the pile you've left for yourself to the south. At this point, I highly recommend holding the action button I suggested you to keybind, being those shards, and place all those shards in your beast of burden. Alternatively, you can right click and say, and alter beast of burden. You do this to make sure that you aren't obstructed with a full inventory while mining. As soon as you've finished mining this southern rock near the safe zone, you're going to go ahead and run to the northwest and start transmuting another rock there. Unfortunately, this part of the fight is a little bit more tricky because you not only need to avoid these smaller telegraphed attacks, no, you also need to avoid four larger telegraphed attacks at the same time. Successfully dodging the larger telegraphed attacks using a mobility ability such as Dive will reset its cooldown. At this point, I highly suggest trying to keep your health high and, well, I didn't just do that perfectly just there, try to eat while you're moving away from the smaller telegraphed attacks as to not obstruct your character transmuting and then mining this pile. Now, it is of the utmost importance that you do not immediately activate the special action button this time Time once it's off cooldown. You want to make sure that you've almost mined the entire rock or pile completely before activating it. You're then going to hop up the pillars and slam the boss for a huge amount of damage, which actually used to be enough to kill it. In fact, here's a clip of me doing exactly that after depleting the pile I was just showing you until Jagex patched something related to the special action button. So now you can't actually do that, but you are going to hit the boss for major damage and then you just need to finish it off. Now you see me transmuting a little bit here and there because I have a little bit of time before the pillars appear after clicking the action button. I hit the boss and the boss only has roughly 2000 life points left. You're going to transmute any pile you have left and then gather enough fragments to finish off the boss without using the special action button again. One shard equals 2500 damage. Now it's worth noting that you still have that big instant kill like mechanic or attack coming up so you want to stand in the green circle or alternatively, if you're using necromancy runes and you have greater bone shield, go ahead and activate barricade if you still have some adrenaline. Now, in my case here, I don't have much health left, so I can easily kill the boss using a single shard. But if you have more health left, it might be worth rebuilding that conduit in the middle to avoid a lot of extra damage while you're transmuting and then mining that pile. I hope the walkthrough was useful to you, and if it isn't clear just yet, give the boss a try first and then rewatch this segment in the video to see what you've been missing or doing wrong. I'm well aware of other strategies and useful items existing, but for now, this is what I recommend for simplicity's sake. Best of luck on drops and catch you guys in the next one. Peace.